Hi, I'm Christian. Welcome to our Pico 8 tutorial. Man, I've been recording a lot of episodes today. But we are knee deep, knee deep, knee deep. Oh my gosh, this, we are very deep into procedural generation. Um, so last time around, you might remember, we were in a situation where we can, oops, we can actually generate rooms. We can place some rooms in the, on, in the board. Great, I love it. Perfect. Hmm, delicious. But alas, now we want to have to connect the rooms. And this is generally like, I think most people can figure out the rooms placement. I think like what we did through, uh, go through uh, last episode wasn't that hard. I think like, like I think most people would be able to, to figure this out. But this part that we're doing now, the connections, the, the maze, as I like to call this maze, that's, the, that's maybe an, uh, not an obvious part. So as I said, we need to kind of create a worm. We need to cre create a little dude, uh, some kind of algorithm that carves through the wall tiles, that picks a place where it can start carving and starts carving away at those wall tiles. Okay. And so this algorithm has to kind of like figure out if a given location, if this tile, that tile there, if that tile is something where he can, or she, I guess it, it can start carving. Um, so it has to pick like a good candidate for, for carving. Um, and those candidates are have like very specific requirements. For example, something that it sh um, where it shouldn't be carving is where it there's gonna be it will it would break through a wall to a different location. So for example, uh, I can sh actually cannot say, but this wall that I'm bumping against that would be a very bad place to start carving, or like continue carving even, uh, because this is like a location where I would like break through you know between two rooms. That's bad. This location is also bad, we said. It won't actually break through to another location, but you can see diagonally it would like create like this little like this, this diagonal connection that is awkward because it's like it's almost as if the rooms were connected but they're not really connected. And line of sight would actually go through this, but you cannot actually move through that. Bad. Let's avoid this. Let's make the our room generation not do these kinds of things. Carving in here, that's okay. That's that would be fine. We kind of do like um, carve into a room, so that might cause some problems later on and will actually cause some problems, but it's fine. It will just start, you know, um, um, it will it will just start like making an exit from that room and into a maze. That's fine. And we're going to keep using the same function that identifies if a tile, a tile is carvable as we move on. You know, we're going to carve one tile deep. And then we're gonna see all, all, you know, we're gonna check all of the neighboring tiles, and if they are, you know, if they're still carvable, and then continue carving. Our, our worm will worm itself through the, through the uh, wall, through the rock, um, continue checking the neighboring tiles if they are okay to be get carved, um, until it arrives at a location where there's no places for for it to carve anymore, and then it will stop, and then we can scan the entire map again for other candidates to start carving and so forth. Right? So the next step, like the big thing that's stopping us from this is um, having a function that identifies locations as carvable, as something that we can carve into. It's not, not, um, it's not an, an, intuitive, uh, an intuitive function to, to kind of identify where we're going to carve or not. And maybe I'm overdoing things a little bit, but there is like certain thing that I want to be doing to kind of explain to you what I mean. Uh, that wait a minute. I'm, I skipped. <laughs> I skipped a sentence there. <laughs> I've been recording for a long time. There's a there's a certain thing I want to be doing now that will help us in the, in the future. Let me show you what I mean. Bam. So let me first think about like okay. First of all, obviously we're on, only going to carve in locations where where you know where we are actually where there's a wall. So let's say this is the location we are checking. And uh, this is the location we're trying to carve. This is the one. And uh, this is not the, the fill tool is not really good here, but okay. And let's make a let's make an X in here. That's like for you know, we are carving this bad boy. Okay, so this is the one that we're carving. We found out okay, it's it's not walkable, it's a it's a wall, we can carve it. So how do we find out? Um let's let's try go through through some of um things that this location could be. 
uh, to, in order to be carved. Obviously, like if, if, if the location of all the neighboring tiles are walls, that's fine, we can carve it, it's fine. If the location is something like this, where there's just one exit on the sides, that's also great, that's fine. Let's do that. We can, we can absolutely carve in, into that. If location is just like this, when there's like, you know, two exits, that's not good. But then because that means that we would break through from one area of the map to another area. So that's not good. Let's not carve in those locations. And, um, and then there's like some locations, like something like this. That's fine for carving. Here's why I, I find it fine for carving. Um, we're going to use the same function to see, um, you know, if we can carve the next tile as we continue carving through the through the rock. And this is the kind of um, um, this is the kind of signature, this kind of surroundings that our our tunnel will have if if we just make a curve around the corner, right? If we just change direction, then that's like our worm came like from here, like let's say maybe this look like here, you know. A worm came all the way down here. Now it changed direction and went down here. So that's what the signature would look like. I call it already signature because that's what we're going to have to do. We're going to find out the signature of the walls of the tiles surrounding our tile. And a signature will be kind of like a simple way of ident identifying, of talking about um, what is the pattern of walls or walkable tiles on, and not walkable tiles around a uh, a given location, a signature. We're going to have to identify a signature. The reason why we're going to identify a signature here is that <clears throat> we're going to need the same signature later on when uh, for, for other things as well. Like it, that's something that will pop up over and over again, where it's like, for example, you might want to place a chest, but you want to place a chest only in, in locations where it doesn't actually block the way. So you don't have to open the chest. So you can, can also walk around it. Or you want to place a door and you want to place a door in such a way that it doesn't block, uh, that it, it, you can actually get out of the door, you know, that it's actually in a hallway. Or you want to place an exit and that exit should be also like not blocked by other unwalkable things. So, you know, there's all sorts of situations where you can have, have to kind of figure out a signature, I call it signature, of a given tile. So that's something that we're going to do. That's something that, um, and you know, I work on this for a long time. No, not a long time. That's something that, that has been a bit of a quest of mine. And I figured a good way of doing this. I'm not sure if it's a good way. You guys let me know if that's that's good for you. Uh, okay, so we're gonna go, we're gonna call this function get sig, get signature. We're gonna have an x position, a y position, and that's it for now. Later on we can maybe uh, upgrade it so maybe there's like a mode that it passes on to the um, is walkable function underneath that kind of like checks for the signature. So we can have like different kinds of signatures that we're checking against. It's fine. Okay, so what are we going to do? We are going to loop for um, through all of the neighboring tiles, all of the eight neighboring tiles. And at this point you might be, you might be like, wait a minute. That sounds oddly familiar. Wait a minute, that's something we already did. This is this is familiar territory. <gasps> is, th is that is that some yes, exactly. These are those two the very first thing that we did almost in the very first episode where it's like we're pressing buttons, remember those things? It's the same it's the same array we're gonna use for this. We're gonna use the same array to kind of like generate the signature of a given tile. So we're gonna go like for, um, no, uh, we're gonna go local dx uh, dy equals um, x plus dear x i and then y plus dear y i. Like that, that, that should be like, it's, you know, it's, it's basically the, you know, dear x and dy, you know, it's, it's fine. Okay, so now we have like a position around the tile that we're looking for and then and now it's gonna be like, um, by the way, if we're talking about signature, we're not talking about the actual tile that we're looking at. The tile itself is something we can check for against, but you know, the tile surrounding it are the thing that we're interested in. So how are we going to return a signature? How, how are we gonna save a signature? There's multiple ways of doing this, 
But I found like a really cool and compact way of doing this is saving it as a bit. How do you call it? A bitmap? A, a bit, like a, like a number, a binary number. And we already talked about this when we talk about patterns. You can be like 0B and then 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, You can like have a number like this. And that num that's actually a number. Um, so let me, we might be able to actually show it real quick. So let's see, um, let's put it in a map gen here and we, let's make it so that debug uh, one equals this, right? And let's remove the two debugs that we had last time around. We don't need those for now. Well, actually, let's make mm, let's make them comment them out. So yeah, let's let's just draw this in the debug. And you can see that's 682. This this combination of of zeros and ones in uh, normal numbers in in uh, de decimal numbers is 766. And so you can like experiment with that, with digital numbers now. So of obviously just zero is is zero, one is obviously just one, and then you know ten is is two, and uh, eleven is two, and then you know introduce your your favorite binary joke. It's like oh, there's just ten types of people: those who get binary people and uh, binary, and those who don't. Ha 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 ha! <laughs> zero one because ten is two and. <laughs> There's, there's all sorts of stupid jokes in here. But you can see, you know, okay, different types of combinations of zeros and ones result in different numbers. And the cool thing about this is that we can easily com compare these numbers with each other. It's like, okay, if the signature is five, that's this kind of arrangement of tiles, right? So we don't have to like uh, compare each individual, like if the upper one is equals the lower one and so forth. It's just like in, the surrounding tiles are expressed by a number by a single number and that's very very convenient for us so we're going to learn some <clears throat> some ways of of com like manipulating binary numbers or at least binary manipulating numbers in a binary kind of way okay okay so how are we going to construct this binary number how are we going to do this hmm. um so first of all, let us let me just if, just look if this works. So it is is walk walk able um, dx dy. Then something happens. Then we want to add. If it's walkable, we're going to add a zero because it's not like there's nothing inside. Else, that's going to be a one. And so somehow in these kind of things, we want to add a zero or add a a, um, a one at, a, at the next stop along the sequence of uh, of binary binary numbers now if this if it's the first one it's going to be easy right it's going to be zero b one and this is going to be zero b zero right this is going to be the first entry but how are we going to go from zero from zero to one zero right well and then you know you want to like slowly create like the sequence of numbers in here. How are we going to create this kind of sequence? That's kind of like hmm, weird. There is there is way, ways of doing this. So let me let me show you some some tools that you have in your in your binary toolbox that will help you. First of all, there is um, shift left, shift left. That allows you to take a number and shift it by by a number of positions to the left or right in binary. So um, let's 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 start with something like one, right? So that's that's going to be one, and we know that ten. That's going to be two. So and then we know that hundred is four. So one, one, two, four, and so forth, right? So let's start with one and let's shift L. So it's at S, S L. We're gonna take this 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 bad boy here and we're gonna shift it by one. First, let's shift it by zero first. It's still one, right? Now we're gonna shift it by one. It's gonna turn into two. Now we're gonna shift it by two. It's gonna turn into four. And we can even have like a more complicated. Um, so you can see like all of the bits have been shifted to the right. Uh, to the left they just like moved further down 
uh, so you get a bigger number. So it's basically like adding a zero. So like, you know, like basically like it's saying like, okay, like a two that turns into 20, that turns into 200, that turns into, you know, you can also like shift them, you, know, you can take more complex numbers. So you could like in a, so say something like zero, zero, one, like 101 and turn it to 100, zero, and then 101, zero, zero, and so forth. Uh, so you can like add zeros on, 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 add leading zeros basically, or not leading, like trailing zeros basically to your number. That's the idea of shift L. So you can see that, you know, uh, if you take 101 and shift it by one, so first of all, shift it by zero, that's gonna be five. And if you shift it by one, that's gonna be 10. Um, now we have to check if that's, I'm not really good by, at binary. So, so this should, like these two should be equal, like and it's a 10, right? And if you shift it by two, we should get this result here, where, where there's two zeros at the, at, the, at the side. You get it? You get it. I think you get it. So this is our first tool. And the second tool that we're going to apply here is we can have binary operators binary operators and that's actually the the thing that really drives this whole idea home a binary operator is kind of like something like a boolean statement so something like if true or false then like true or false when you have an or an or one of these has to be true both could be also true for the the results to be true, right? Equals like this is let's let's this true or true equals true, false or true equals true, but false or false equals false. This is the or operator that kind of like takes true or false and then re returns something. We also know the and operator for the and operator false and false is false, true and false is false. And only true and true is true. That's something very familiar with. It seems like very familiar stuff. So you have the same and and or and other ones for bits, for binary numbers. What? So what it does then is instead of like applying this to a single true or false statement, it goes all of the position in a binary number and compares them with positions of a different binary number. So you can like lay two numbers next to each other and then compare each individual num each individual um, number, like two, <laughs> two sequences of ones and zeros. So you can put them next to each other and compare each zero and one um, at each given position with each other. And the result is gonna be a new number that is kind of like the result of this kind of operation, like the end operation with each other. Huh? So let me let me exemplify this real quick. So let's do something like so B or is like the or statement, bitwise or statement. So we're gonna we're gonna go B or and let's make it like really simple. A zero B one comma zero B 0, B, 1. Both are 1. What will we get as a result? Oh, that doesn't work. Um, oh, yeah, we have to comment this out. It's going to, going to run 1 as a result. If I'm going to turn this into 0, it's still going to be 1 because this is an OR operator. If I'm going to po turn both into 0, it's going to be 0. So far, so good. It's kind of like the same thing as we did with the with the or statement, or um, like when when we had this, right? This is kind of like the same thing. Um, except true is one and false is zero. Um, now we can make it. We can go two digits. Now this is a two-digit binary number now. So if we go one one. One one, the result is going to be three. Three is one one. Just to, just so we understand. The result is three. Uh, wait, that's wrong. The result is one one three. The bi in binary, it's one one. That's a, the result is three. Oh my gosh, it's so difficult to talk about these. <laughs> okay, so let's let's. What happens if we, for example, if we make zero 
zero, like one, zero, one in this and zero, zero here. So this should result in a one. This should be our result, zero, one. It is, because this zero or this zero, both are zero, so the result is zero. This is a one, so true. This is a zero, so false. The, and the combinator is or, so at least one of them is a one, so that's fine. So the result is a zero, one. If I make it b or zero, one, one, zero, that should get us a one, one as a result. And so a three in, in, in decimal. And this allows you to compare a whole string of zeros and ones in one go. Um, so you have b or, you have also b and, so that's an and operator. And so in this case, like if you have, if you have the same numbers, but we operate and on them, we should get a zero, zero out because for the and, both numbers should have a one at any given spot. So if we do this, it's gonna be zero. But if we add a one on this spot, we should get a two. Yeah, because it's zero, one. The result is gonna be uh, one, zero, I mean. So that's gonna be the result. Okay. So a band and then there's also b, b, x, or, that's exclusive or. So that's basically just one of the numbers has to be one, the other can't be one. So both, if both are one, the results are gonna be zero. And if both are zero, the results also gonna be zero. And, just, and if one is zero and the other one is one, then only the one, the, um, the result's gonna be one. So it's exclusionary or. We actually don't have the exclusionary or for Boolean statements, funny enough, in Lua, or at least in, in Pico 8. Long explanation. Maybe I, this should have been like a introduction to binary video. Maybe I should have prepared this a little better. But uh, yeah, let me know if you have any questions. But this is generally like the tool set that we're gonna use here. So what we have to do now is we're gonna slowly but surely construct this binary number that represents the, represents the signature of this tile. Um, so here's how I'm, I'm thinking I'm gonna do this. So I'm gonna go local, um, the actual sig, that's a signature, and local um, um, digit, I'm gonna call it digit. It's, it's, I'm gonna spell it out so it's actually really clear. So I think signature is gonna be zero and digit, I don't, don't care, it's gonna, it can be nil. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna figure out what digit to add, but what is the next digit I wanna add, and I'm gonna keep adding those digits to the signature. So if is walkable is, um, if it is walkable, then digit is supposed to be zero. And if it's not walkable, then digit is supposed to be, now this is a bit of an issue here, um, because here is actually we want to have to do the bit shifting now. Or actually, do we have to do the bit shifting now? We don't have to do a bit shifting now. So let's let's just say it's one. It's fine. So digit is one. And I already see this. This could be a ternary. We're probably going to turn this into a ternary. Okay. Okay. So how do we add now this digit to our signature? Well, we're going to do something like sig equals, and then we're going to use the bore b or. And we, we're gonna use the digit. We're gonna take the digit, we're gonna bit shift it to the right position that it's supposed to be at. And then we're gonna B or it to the already existing signature. Because the signature starts with zeros. So um, if we add, use an or operator to, um, to the digit that's correctly bit shifted, we're just gonna drop a digit in there um, at the, the given position. If the new digit is one, the result is gonna be, there's gonna be one at that position. And if the new digit is zero, it's gonna, it's gonna be zero at this position. It's kind of like we're adding those numbers to, to each other basically. So it's gonna be sig, comma, and now we're gonna shift. Now we're gonna shift. Okay, so <laughs> we're gonna use, um, I'm just, I would just like zoning out here a little bit. So we're gonna go S S H L, and then it's gonna be digit, comma, and now how many spaces we're gonna shift it? And so that was like, a s wait a minute, so it was, so at the beginning it should be zero, right? Wait, it should start out at, no, it's gonna be eight minus i. 
like this. So the, so again, like the first entry is going to be the the largest number, so to speak. So it's going to be a bit difficult. So let me let me exemplify. So you know, this is going to be the first entry. This is going to be second entry, third entry, fourth. Then and then that these are going to be diagonals, right? So it's going to be like this is going to be our big number, and so the first entry is going to be like on the very far left. So it's going to be the most shifted one. And the final entry is going to be shifted by zero. So at the end, when, when, when we're going through the, our final, final loop, i is going to be eight. So it's going to be eight minus eight. So it's going to be zero. So this one, this final entry here is going to be zero. And the first time you're going through this loop, it's going to be, um, the i is going to be one. So it's going to be eight minus one. So it's going to be shifted by seven. So that's going to be, that should be here, I think. Yeah, it should be here. So that's how we're going to get uh, like this signature of, of our location. So now <clears throat> we can kind of want to see the result, right? We kind of want to see what, what, what the signature is, like how this works. Oh yeah, we actually, by the way, we also return sig here at the end. That makes sense, right? Good. So, um, I'm, I'm, I'm nervous. Let's, let's see how this works. Uh, let's make, um, when we're moving uh, ourselves, actually it's like an update game. Let's go like get sig, um, uh, pmob dot x, pmob dot y. Just like getting the signature of the locations that we are. Oh yeah. We have to also debug zero. Are we not getting it? No, it should be one. Okay, already off the bat, great starting point. Look, if we, if our tile is surrounded by other with other walls, that's just a number filled with ones, a number like a binary number that's filled with ones, and we know that this number is two hundred fifty-five. We know that this is two hundred fifty-five. Real quick, um, where is Jen? Did I delete the gen stuff here? I already did. So that's great. So let's make it make it here. <clears throat> so if we're gonna get a zero B, so one 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 one. If that's a full with ones, and then of course if we get all zeros, zero 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 zero, zero 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 zero, that's gonna be just a zero. That's gonna be just zero. <laughs> Right, so you can see I'm walking around and things are changing. I'm, I wanna, yeah, so you can see if I'm surrounded by walls, that already gives us an idea that this worked. Because if I'm surrounded by walls, I do actually get the one, 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 one. Great. And then we're gonna see maybe some other signatures that, uh, okay, so let's see. So here's a signature 22 if the, if the lower walls are can we can we have like maybe some like similar some simpler signature twenty two Let's do it by hand and then we can see like if if this works and that's going to be the end of the episode. So okay, if we're standing at the at the wall underneath us, that's going to be twenty two. Twenty two is what we what we what our result was. So let's go through this procedure manually and let's see um, what um, you know what uh, what we figured out. So the first space we're looking at is you know it's like the Pico 8 button presses. So first location is going to be to the left. Um, to the left of us, there's going to be free space, so that's going to be zero. So again, um, zero B zero. Um, then going to the right, there's also going to be an empty space, so that's going to be a zero. Then going upwards, um, because again, Pico 8 directions, that's going to be also zero. Downwards is a one though. And now we're going diagonals. Diagonals are like, I do them like the clockwork. So upper right, upper right is going to be zero, that's going to be empty. Lower right, uh, lower right, it's going to be one, because there was a wall underneath us. Now uh, lower left, <laughs> it's going to be one and upper left is going to be zero. So this was the number that that manually this 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 algorithm should result in. And then I now I'm praying that this is going to be 22. I'm praying this is 22. Yeah. 
It's 22, yes! <laughs> so you can see if I run against the wall, I get the 22 up there. And then, you know, we could like go through the other ones to make sure that this works, but it actually, you know, it's like, it's the same code that I used previously. I, I did ma make things a bit more difficult for me this time around because previously I had actually a different sequence of numbers that I used here. I you had a, a, this array for the directions of the button presses, but I had a different array that was about, you know, just going clockwise around the, that was a bit easier for my mind to comprehend, but it had a disadvantage that I had like to have like two sets of those, um, out of those um, mm, of those arrays, um, and I didn't like that, so I, it, I ha I'm happy that I have the opportunity to go back again in the code and redo it, so we only use just one set of arrays to look for the, all the neighboring directions. However, that means also that we can have to, like, there's going to be some extra work for me down the line because I just can't copy a lot of the code that I already prepared. Good. So this is going to be the end of the episode, uh, but but just like. Just so you know what happens now is now that we are getting a, a signature of uh, of a given of a given location, what we have to create now, and I'm gonna have to actually sit down and do this manually. We have to create all of the signatures that are okay um, as a kind of like a carving spot. We're gonna have to like create a list of signature that are okay to get carved. And um, then we're gonna run this um, this signature scan through all of the tiles on the map that are not walkable and we're going to identify the tiles that are carvable that that is it's fine to carve to do our maze and then we're going to start carving but that's something that comes up in the next episode uh, again the code is going to be down in doobly-doo uh, hopefully this was kind of understandable i kind of like try to go slow but you know binary numbers seems very complicated um, let me know if you have any questions uh, and if you have any more questions you actually want to speak to me or speak to our other people who are going through this tutorial, uh, join the Discord or get a, I should do like a binary t-shirt that's like a binary stuff on there, that would be fun as well. Mm. And uh, yeah, see you next time around guys, bye bye.